All right. Uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, linear and quadratic functions and graphing them. It's lunchtime, so hopefully not too many people come in here and make too much noise during the video. Uh, okay, so this is section section eight eight from the book uh, linear and quadratic. functions, and we are going to be graphing them. So in the last few days, we have been uh, graphing linear equations. So let me pull out a graph here. And we've been graphing equations that look like this. y equals um, 2x uh, minus 2, also known as f of x equals 2x minus 2. And these are pretty simple to graph. You just put a, a dot at the y-intercept, which would be negative 2 in this case. And then we slope. Um, the slope is 2 uh, over 1, or it could also be negative 2 over negative 1. So I can go up 2 from here and to the right 1, up 2 and to the right, up 2 and to the right, and I can keep doing that. And I could also go down 2 and to the left, down 2 and to the left, and so on. And that is the graph of this linear function. We know it's a linear function because the y and x values have a power of 1, or an exponent of 1, which is invisible. So you could say that they don't have an exponent at all. Um, today we're going to try some uh, quadratic graphing. So you might remember that word quadratic from when we were factoring earlier in the year. Uh, now I'm going to show you what it looks like on a graph. So let's get my graph out here. Okay. So let's say we wanted to graph something. Well, let's see. Any quadratic function will work. And let's say I wanted to graph y equals x squared plus uh, 1. Okay. I know this is quadratic because it has a squared x term. Um, so I know it's not linear, so I'm not going to use the slope-intercept graphing because a quadratic does not have a constant slope, so that wouldn't help. Um, from yesterday's stuff, we could also write this as f, f of x equals x squared plus 1. They mean the same thing. So how do we go about graphing something like this? Well, one way to do it is to make a little xy chart, kind of like yesterday. Um, you know, you could set it up like this, like we did yesterday, and just choose values for y. Um, you could choose, I'm uh, sorry, choose values for x. Uh, you can choose any value you want. I like to choose values that are low to make calculations easy. I usually do like a negative 1. And then, uh, so we plug negative 1 in there. Negative 1 squared plus 1. I should probably use a different color for the plug-in. I'll start doing that in a minute. Um, so negative 1 squared is 1, plus 1 would be 2. Um, I could plug in 0. So then we'd have 0 squared plus 1. And that would give me 1. And I could plug in a 1, and that would give me 1 or 2. Okay, so we could plug in all these different values. Um, and so if we plugged in a 1, we'd get 2. And if we plugged in a 2, uh, we'd get 5, and so on. Okay, and so now we graph them. Notice uh, we have the x, in this case, would be uh, negative 1, and the corresponding y value would be 2. So that would form our, 
our coordinate pair, okay? Remember our x comma y coordinate pair. Uh, so negative one comma two would be here, and then zero comma one would be here, and one comma two would be here, and two comma five would be up here. And um, let's do one more point just to get the full look of the figure here. Let's try a negative two. So I'm going to plug in a negative two there. And notice that we also get five. <clears throat> so by squaring that x value, if it happened to be negative, the square squaring aspect of it would uh, make it positive. And that's why... Um, you get a 5 whether you plug in 2 or negative 2. Okay, you get a 5 there. And to finish off the graph, I, we want to connect the dots. Now notice I'm not connecting them in a straight line or like multiple straight lines. I'm trying to make a curve, okay? Because that's what a quadratic function looks like. It's a curve and they look like a U or an N. I know this one looks kind of like a V, but it's actually supposed to be a U or an N. Now, um, so that's how you do it. You just pick values for X and plug it into the equation and then find out what the Y value would be. Um, the only problem with that, um, I'll show you on this next one. Uh, by the way, if you don't understand anything I've said or it's coming too quickly, feel free to pause the video at any time, rewind. Um, let it sink in, okay? Uh, so let's do a new example. Get another the graph out here. Okay, so I'm going to choose a new one, and we're going to choose um, negative x squared plus 4x plus 1. Alright, so there's the function I'm going to graph. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my x values in here. I'm going to put the function. And then I'm going to put the y. Alright. So the x values, just like last time, let's choose these same ones. 0, 1, 2, and I'm going to plug them in, so I'm going to get a negative 2 squared, and a negative 1 squared, and a 0 squared, and a 1 squared, and a 2 squared, plus, and there's going to be a negative 2 there, oops, oh man, I'm kind of messing up everything here. All right, so we got our negative 2, and I shouldn't even, all right, I'm going to erase all that. Switching up these colors is making me make some mistakes here. We'll try to remedy that. Okay, so I'm going to plug in a negative 2, a negative 1, a 0, a 1, and a 2. And since it occurs twice here, I'm going to also in here and I'm going to fill in the rest of it with red to show that that remains the same. All right, so we have our negative, they're squared, we're adding, and there's a 4 there, right? Okay, so a negative, a squared, a plus 4, plus 1, negative, squared, plus 4, plus 1. As I'm doing this, I'm realizing it's probably a, this is not something you'd want to do. I'm mainly doing it because I have these different colors, I'm going to stop picking them up and putting them down. It gets annoying. Uh, so if we look at the top row here, we have our negative 2 uh, squared would be 4. But then, then this negative here, um, we have to apply after that. So, so that's going to be a negative 4 plus negative 8. That's negative 12 plus 1. So we have negative 11. Uh, down here, we have negative 1 squared is 1. The opposite of that is negative 1 plus negative 4 is negative 5 plus 1 is, 
to four. And then we have zero plus zero plus one. And then we have negative one plus four, that's three. Plus one is four. And then we have four, negative four plus eight, that's four, plus one is five. All right, so we have something like that. <clears throat> um, so if I were to graph this, I have a negative 2 comma 11, so that's way up here, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, that's like somewhere up here, and negative 1, negative 4, that's, oh, negative 11, whoops, sorry about that, that was a mistake, so down here, I'm going to erase that one I just put up top, um, negative 2, negative 11, negative 1, negative 4, we have 0, 1, it's like right there, we have 1, 4, Two five. Okay, so as as we're doing this, we realize, oh, that doesn't look anything like that last picture. What I'm seeing here is like a you know, curve, kind of a, kind of like that. I don't know. I didn't do a very good job of curving that out, did I? Let's try that again. So two five. So it kind of looks like something like that. Well, that's a dilemma. 